last part. So remember how we said that we were in the buffer zone of our titration, where we have both an acid and a base? We had that excess NH3, and we also had the NH4 plus that had formed at this point in the reaction. What we need to do is convert those moles of our base and our acid that have formed into molarities because we're going to use an ice table here. So for our moles to go into molarities, we know the moles from up above. Now to turn them into molarities, we need a volume. So we need to look at what's the volume at this point in the problem. When you're at point B in the problem, you've added 15 milliliters of acid to 20 milliliters worth of base. So that means right now, at this snapshot moment in time, our total volume is 35 milliliters. The 15 milliliters of acid plus the 20 milliliters worth of base. Or in other words, 0 0.0350 liters of solution. So if we want moles and molarity, if we had 0 0.00018 moles worth of NH3 left over, 0 0.00018 have reacted, and we have 0 0.00018 moles left over in that flask, and the volume of that solution at that moment in time is 0 0.0350. That means that we have 0 0.00514 molar NH3 left over. Well, don't we also have 0 0.00018 moles worth of NH4 plus have been formed at that point in the reaction? because half of it has reacted, half of it has turned into NH4+. So we started with 0 0.00036 worth total. Half of that has been converted over. Well, if we have the same number of moles of NH4 plus formed and the volume's the same, don't we also have 0 0.00514 molar NH4 plus that has formed at this point in the reaction. So now let's put it all together. How are we going to find that, uh, that pH when we're at that midpoint? What are we going to do? Uh, so it says page four. I think that's a typo. Pretty sure it's on page five. In order to figure this out, we need an equation that has both of these chemicals in it because we know molarities of both of those guys. We need an equation that has both NH3 and NH4 plus in it. If you look back on page five, there was a reaction there that had, let's go back, let me find it for you because there's so many reactions here, right? That we're going to look and you'll see why I'm using this particular one in just a second. It's here somewhere. Let me find it. I want... It's here, it's here, I promise. This guy. I want to use this equation. The NH3 with water turning into NH4 plus and OH minus. The reason why this equation is going to help me is because from previous calculations, I know the value of Kb. I just solved for the molarity of the NH4 plus and the NH3. So if you know Kb, NH4 plus, and NH3, can't you find the molarity of the hydroxide, then the pOH, and then the pH? So I'm going to use this equation and this Kb to help us figure out our final pH that we're going to plug into that graph. Here we go. So 
Here's our reaction, NH3 plus water turns into NH4 plus and hydroxide. We know that the Kb value of that reaction would be NH4 plus times OH minus over NH3. From previous calculations, you guys found that the Kb in this problem was 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. We just found out up above that the molarity of the NH4 plus is 0 0.00514. We don't know hydroxide. We know that this guy is also 0 0.00514 little bit of algebra. You could solve for the concentration of that hydroxide. And because these guys will cancel, the hydroxide is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. If we do the negative log of 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, that'll give us our pOH. The pOH turns out to be 4.745. So if we want to get the pH, we have to subtract that number from 14, and we get a pH of 9.255. That, it says, go back to your graph, put that pH value on your graph. So here it is, right here at our midpoint. 9.255. Now this part B, as you can see, is kind of complicated, right? Oh my goodness, there's a lot of steps for that part B. You have to figure out which one's the limiting reactant. You have to figure out how much is reacted, how much is left over, what those molarities are. Uh, find an equation that ties it all together for you to be able to solve for the pH. So what I'm going to show you guys tomorrow is there is an equation that makes this part a little bit easier to swallow, um, or you don't have to do quite as much work to be able to, to figure out what the pH is in that buffer zone. So now you know the pH throughout the whole titration curve, and tomorrow we'll start to see how to make that buffer zone part a little bit easier.